Hey everyone, Riles Productions here. Here's our video on how to uh, service um, some how precision upper ball joints. Um, we use these on our, all, our, all our builds. Um, these actual ball, ball joints were the first ones that we had installed on the CUDA. Um, we installed these back in 2015 um, and uh, we took them out in 2018. Um, after three years of track and street use, um, there's a new or a newer set, uh, about a year old, in the CUDA right now that it's running on. Um, so those are still good. Um, so we need to service these. Um, what we're going to do is uh, disassemble this ball joint into um, uh, a neat layout like this uh, ball joint already is. And once this particular ball joint is disassembled like this we're going to reassemble this one um, into a serviceable uh, reusable unit so uh, here we go um, first step is to get a uh, 3 30 seconds um, allen key and just um, take off the set screws they pop off real easy um, servicing these ball joints aren't rocket science it's very simple to do you um, just have to have the correct tools and um, you know, read the instructions. Um, we also use uh, Schaefer's 238 grease. Um, we called how to uh, see which uh, grease that they recommend, and they said the 238 is um, is some good stuff. Uh, Schaefer's is made in USA, I think, out of Missouri, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we just recently got that tube of um, grease, so uh, we're going to use it. Um, the next step is use a half inch drive to take the cap off the housing. Um, there's an O-ring in here, and you got to be careful not to, not to uh, damage it. So. It should pop right off. Everything is smooth. See, there's an O-ring. And it's full of grease. Um, this is the original grease from Hal. So, that's the... That's the cap. Um, this is the ball. And this is the housing. So, how to test if this is um, still straight as you install the ball into the housing backwards. And if it spins straight, um, if it spins straight like this, it should still be good. If it wobbles, that means it's bent and you need to throw it away and get a new um, ball and stud. But um, this particular ball still looks good. Um, so there's the housing. Oh, we're going to clean that up. Let's inspect this. I have a piece of um, tissue paper there. I'll wipe off all the old grease. And then, um, like I said, this is uh, has been on the CUDA for um, three years. You're supposed to um, check the. Uh, ball joints every year, but uh, we neglected to do so. But this is the wear and tear on it. Um, the ball still feels really smooth. Um, there's no nicks or anything like that. Um, there's no grooves or anything like that. And the other, the other ball is actually worse. There was a nick on it that you can clearly see, but this. This particular ball is still smooth to the touch. So, um, there's the ball. Uh, there's the housing. I'll leave the, uh, the castle nut and the washer there. It doesn't need to be disassembled. Um, I'm going to wash these with soap and water and then re-grease them so they don't rust. Um, but I'm going to reassemble them shortly anyways. The last step is to... Uh, make sure you get the Zerk 
Is there grease fitting out of here? Um, and this is a with a five sixteenths um, nut, so I just pop that off. Um, you want to make sure you disassemble everything and um, get all the get all the dust and crap out of there. Um, that way, you want to make sure everything is perfectly clean. Uh, and a good way to to know how it's clean is if you wipe a part and it's still white, then that means it's clean. So um, I wipe all the the grease off and wash it out and and uh, you know make sure everything is clean because you don't want any dust particles or other crap to to damage the ball. So. So we're going to reinstall or reassemble the uh, this cleaned uh, ball joint. Um, these parts have been washed already and um, they're ready to reassemble. Uh, made sure everything is clean, there's no crap in there. I have a new set of gloves by the way, um, switched out to new gloves. And um, to reassemble the, the ball joint, I first start with uh, the O-ring and put it back onto the cap uh, make sure you don't damage the o-ring because it's real delicate and you'd be screwed if you don't um, install this correctly so the next step is to put the ball into the housing and then put the cap onto the screw the cap onto the housing itself and Make sure you don't squash and damage the o-ring. Um, I use my half inch drive to screw the housing on top. And then the trick is to uh, screw the cap onto the ball until it just makes contact. And then once you Make contact the ball gets stuck if you screw it all the way down you see now to set lash you have to turn the ball uh, counterclockwise uh, one eighth of a turn so I just go by one of the the dash marks here and it's pointing to a corner I'm going to turn it to the flat so it's uh, one eighth of a turn and then, there that's one eighth and the ball should be loose like this like so and then um, I have to reinstall the zerg fitting um, so with the zerg fitting you dab a little bit of Loctite on here just a little bit and then Throw it on to the onto the threads there. It's kind of tricky to get the zerk fitting back on, but she use a five sixteenths um, socket and it should be good. This is a quarter inch drive, so. Tighten that down, and with the the Loctite, it shouldn't go anywhere. Now, uh, hmm. oh, it turned the uh, it reset the dash, so I have to turn the set the lash again. So when I tighten down the Zerk fitting, it, it retightened the cap. So I just reset the lash. Like I said, once the cap contacts the ball, you just have to back back it off one eighth of a turn, and then the ball is like this again. So um, once you're at this stage, you make sure you get the set screws, and then put some um, some Loctite on the set screws. Blue Loctite is good. You don't want that red stuff on there. That's, you're going to have to use heat with red. There. 
There's some up to it there. Use the uh, Allen wrench. <laughs> so I'll re Loctite it. There's a drop. Loctite. There's one side, and then just pour, put more Loctite here. There you go, just enough in there. Set of screws hold the cap in place so it doesn't um, uh, shift. And the lash is set by the arrows to the flat for this particular ball joint. So, like you said, you have to. Um, set the lash. It's very important to set the lash with these um, how preci precision ball joints. Um, if you don't, it doesn't um, function properly. So you, you torque these down so the cap's going to stay put. And then you just re grease with the 238, this stuff, with a grease gun. And then put your washer and your castle nut back on. And then use a brand new cotter pin, by the way. Don't cheap out and use the old ones because these will break and your nut will fall off. Use a brand new one. These are um, a little bit too big. I went to the store and got big ones, so I got re I got to return these, but... Uh, you know, you use a brand new one, new one, use your common sense and do that. And so this is a reserviceable um, or a reusable uh, upper ball joint. I just have to re-grease it with 238 um, Schaefer's 238 uh, Ultra Supreme Grease made in USA. It's good stuff. Um, but yeah. That's pretty much it. So these are going to be going back on the CUDA once um, the CUDA's current uh, ball joints go out. So um, we'll be ready to go. We're going to do the same process on this other ball joint here. We're going to clean it and reassemble it as well. So that's going to be a, this is going to be a, a spare set for the CUDA. Um, we also have uh, another set. This is a brand new set. As you can see here um, from our previous video, uh, same part number 22320 for the 73 Challenger build. Um, these will come on. We'll go on to the Hotchkiss A arms. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's simple to do. Um, we love these ball joints. Um, they're super buttery smooth and made in the US. So. Um, they're going to see some tracks on time soon. But uh, that's it for now, guys. This is Riles Productions. See you guys at the track later.